Professor Chris Wise designs and builds some of the most exciting, cutting-edge structures in the world. To do that, he has to push technology to the very limit. It's a case of mind over matter. When I was very, very young, I had an idea for a very, very fast bike. In fact, probably the fastest vehicle on the planet. It was a way of linking lots and lots of cogwheels together, one after the other, a big cogwheel to a smaller cogwheel to a big cogwheel to a smaller one, about 20 in sequence. And if you join them all together and only had a wheel at the very back, by pedaling at the front, you'd end up with an amazingly fast bike. I asked my dad if he would buy me the cogwheels. He, he said he would like to, but he uh, just thought it was a bit risky and it might not actually work. Would it have worked? No, it wouldn't have worked. There's too much, there's too much um, resistance to each of the turning things. That's what I found out later. But to an eight-year-old, it seemed like a really good idea. Chris has always loved building things, but he didn't always know he wanted to be an engineer. I went and did civil engineering at, at university. Almost changed to do medicine. Almost changed to do architecture. But stuck it out to get a degree. Still not really realising what engineers did. And it took me two or three years after that before I realised that it wasn't just mathematics. You could actually design things. You know, you could make things and you could do bridges and you could do towers and you could do stuff like stadiums. And, uh, which was amazing. It was a revelation. Chris isn't the first engineer to push the boundaries of what it's possible to build. 800 years ago, one of the most extraordinary buildings in Britain was constructed on Salisbury Plain, and Chris regularly comes to visit. This is my favourite building. It's Salisbury Cathedral. It was built 800 years ago. And if you imagine what it must have been like for the people who built it, and imagine coming around the corner and seeing something like this just rearing up in front of you, it would just be absolutely amazing. I think of it a bit like imagining a spaceship landing in the middle of the countryside. You know, it would just be mind-blowing. And I really would love to do something as far ahead of its time as this building was when it was first designed. Well, when I first came here 20 years ago, I wanted to study it as a piece of engineering and to use it as, a, as an example of how to use materials very well. And that's what I thought was the most important thing. But every time I come here, I find it just inspirational. I mean, it's, I'm standing in sunlight and they've, they've designed the building just to allow the light to pour in through the, through the window. You get a, a, an uplifting experience and that's what great architecture is about, what great design is about, what great technology is about. And if you think about this building being designed and made 800 years ago, when most people were living in little tiny wooden huts, and to come to a place like this with the light pouring in, I mean, no wonder they were religious, no wonder they believed in God and the heavens, because they, they tried to make it on earth using their technology. What they wanted to do was end up with a fantastically transparent religious experience inside these cathedrals. So they invented a system called flying buttresses, which are these big diagonal stone struts here. What they do is they collect all the forces from the roof and the ceiling and they take them past the wall, right across this lower roof, into these big columns and down to the ground. They collect all the forces and to make sure the forces go to ground, they loaded up the columns with these little spiky pinnacles and they force the loads downwards. But Chris has been influenced by more than just the flying buttresses. He's also learned from some of the building's less visible qualities. In the middle of the winter time, if you go into a cathedral, it's a little bit warmer than it is outside because the stones keep some of the warmth from the sun. And in the summer, when it's hot outside, it's actually cool inside. It's much cooler in here than it is outside today, for example. And I try to use some of that thinking in the buildings that we're designing nowadays. At Duxford Air Museum near Cambridge, Chris worked with the architect Sir Norman Foster to create an award-winning building to house a collection of American warplanes. The huge vaulted roof is the largest in Europe and had to be strong enough to carry the weight of some very large aircraft. The design appears very simple, 
but it requires great skill and ingenuity to achieve. This is a lot like Salisbury Cathedral, although it may not look like it. And it's got warplanes instead of bishops inside it. But it works in the same way, and it uses this big concrete shell, which is the, the roof structure, to control the environment inside. At night time, just as at Salisbury Cathedral, it stores all the cool energy. So during a hot day, it keeps the temperature down inside and makes you nice and comfortable. Also, like the cathedrals, we've cut through the edge of the building to bring the daylight in. And these little steel um, arms, a, a bit like the flying buttresses in the cathedrals. And what they do is they take the big forces, there's about uh, 100 tons in each of those arms, take the big forces across the space where the light comes in and takes it into the ground, which is over there. And this building is buried in the ground as well. The bit we're standing just behind here is earth. And that helps to control the temperature as well. So we've learned a lot from the way that the ancients built their cathedrals and some of their other structures. To construct a building as advanced as this one, Chris needs to know about materials and their strengths, as well as the mathematics of how they work. But which comes first, the design or the maths? The maths is vital, and without it, you can't make sure that anything will work. But if you have the wrong design, it doesn't matter how good the mathematics is, you just end up building something that's horrible. I mean, we could have, we could have made this a rectangular shed if we wanted to, or a triangular shed for that matter, which actually might have been quite good. But we decided to make it this beautiful curve. And that's the thing that people will respond to, you know, emotionally and intuitively, we felt that was the right form. The whole building is like an eggshell, really. What you can't see is this roof is made out of two layers that are only four inches thick. They span 90 meters, so it's almost the same distance that Linford Christie would run in 100 meters. It's a very long wave. And just like an eggshell, you can go a very long distance with a very thin layer of something. It's pretty hard to make an egg, unless you're a chicken. So we had, to, we had to find a way of making an egg, but much more simply. It's really difficult to make an egg because if you look at them very, very carefully, they just curve by a different amount all the way uh, across. So if you can imagine trying to make an egg, you'd have to make that piece curving very tightly and then this piece curving very gently, which would mean, especially if you want to make it out of concrete, you'd have to have a separate special mold for each little section. So you'd have hundreds and hundreds of different molds. And we actually made this entire roof just using five moulds, so it obviously wasn't an egg. Well, we couldn't make it like an egg, so we had a bit of a think, and in the end we decided we'd, we'd make it like one of these. And um, there's a good reason for that. You can imagine every single little piece of this donut as you go round in a big circle. If I, that piece of donut is the same as that piece, which is the same as that piece. And so all we did simply was just to, whoops, cut it out of this donut. Ah, there's the front. There's the back, and there's Duxford. 